So, uh, since I've seen many hands when you said when when James asked whose first DEFCON it is, um, you may think this is something is going wrong. No, actually, this is the DEFCON way of doing things. Um, since everything went perfect, we decided to make some uh, uh, adjustments and, and fuck up some things, and we succeeded. Thank you. So this is the DEF CON way. Uh, welcome to the sixth AppSec Village. This was started in 2019 uh, by Leora, the queen. You may have seen her uh, in the entrance and myself. Since then, it's no longer our thing. It's your thing. Uh, our community is getting bigger and bigger. Last year, we had 8,000 people cross through the AppSec Village um, in, in DEF CON. And we hope to, to break that record this time. So bring your friends. Um, I wanted to say a few words. I will not because we don't have time. I'm just going to present now uh, Alice and Tanisha. They're going to show us something that is very on theme for Vegas and DEF CON. Thank you. Take it away. Here we go. How about now? My name is Tanisha Martin. I am the executive director and founder of a nonprofit called Black Girls Hack. Um, I am also um, a hacker, a wife. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got about five master's degrees and a doctoral degree that's uh, loading. I am the CEO of BGH Security um, and a gambler, which is going to be relevant to this conversation. Um, and I also do uh, AI and cyber security at the intersection of penetration testing and uh, research. Huh? Hey. And I'm Elise McGowan, the uh, CISO for Black Girls Hack, uh, wife, cybersecurity analyst, hacker. Um, I also have a PhD in computer science, um, a baby gambler. So, <laughs> and also um, researcher of cybersecurity and policy development. You know, All right, so um, we're going to be providing um, a brief introduction to the topic, which is basically uh, security concerns, application security concerns within the casino industry. Um, we'll be talking about the importance of cybersecurity um, and uh, within the gaming industry itself, and then we'll provide an overview of the session's objectives and the, the key focus areas. Um, so let me set the scene. Um, when you drive into a casino, um, they literally see you coming. Um, they, they have license plate readers, which basically read your license plate before you even get to the, to the building. Um, and before you've even um, stepped foot into the casino, they've got your face on one of over, you know, 200, um, sorry, is it 200? 2,000. Yeah, 2,000 cameras that connect to about 50 to 75 different monitors within the space. Um, when you get to the front desk, they'll give you, you know, they'll ask you for your ID at most casinos just to make sure that you're of age. Um, and but their surveillance state ex exceeds far beyond just the casino floor. They've also got surveillance um, of things like uh, the uh, what is it called relational Nora, which is non-obvious relationship awareness to uncover relationships between things like the players and dealers and, and things of that nature. Because they not only want to know about what's going on on the floor itself, but they also want to know about any potential um, cheating or anything like that um, and relationships that are going on between people within the casino industry. Um, so in 2008, a guy named Jeff Jonas, who helped develop the facial recognition system that are used within most uh, Las Vegas casinos, um, said that casinos would prefer to spend uh, the minimum amount of security. That should be a surprise to no one. Um, and they would actually prefer to buy three more uh, slot machines rather than spend that money on security. Um, the second thing that I would say is that uh, within casinos, they care more, much more um, about uh, information than I think they do anything else, um, including money. And the reason being is that they are looking for um, information that they can use to basically direct their marketing. So they want to figure out what are the ways that they can use to um, get you to spend the most amount of money. So they do things like uh, check your browsing history, your educational information, um, information about your preferences and proclivities, um, commercial activities, psychological trends, uh, predispositions, et cetera. So when you use their, their systems, they track your precise location within the casinos um, while you're in each of their locations at each, moment, uh, at each moment. But of course, this is only for marketing purposes, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, so cyber criminals, um, in addition to absolutely loving money, 
um, absolutely also love data, which um, casinos tend to collect a large amount of. Um, but as you can imagine, with millions of visitors each year, um, a billion dollar market cap, multi-billion dollar, $300 billion market cap, and annual growth about 5%, um, casinos have a large amount of data on a very large amount of people. Um, and um, uh, let's see. And the one thing that the industry cannot live without, um, it's also, um, if, if you have the one thing that, that uh, bad guys can't live without, what do you do? You hold it for ransom. Okay, so allow me to set the scene. Uh, the players, so if we imagine the casino cyber attacks are the high stakes game of poker, but with cyber security. So the players, the house, normally the house has the advantage with extensive security measures in place to protect its assets. The cyber, the cyber criminals, hackers, skilled players who are looking to outsmart the house using their expertise in technology. The game, the DEC cybersecurity system represents the various security protocols and measures in place to protect the casino's digital assets. The hand, sensitive data, the valuable information the household holds, which in this case, the personal details of customers. The play, the hackers and the up, find a vulnerability. They look for a weakness in the, casino's, in the casino security to gain an initial foothold. The bluff, social engineering. Hackers use deception like phishing and other tactics to trick employees into giving up access or information. The raise, system infiltration. Once inside, they increase their access and control over the casino system. The all-in data breach. Hackers go for the jackpot, attempting to extract as much valuable data as they can. The showdown, the fold, the system shutdown, the casino realizing the breach shuts down the affected systems to stop the attack. The call, investigation and response. Casino responds by investigating the breach, notifying affected customers and, bo and bolstering their security measures to prevent these attacks. In the end, the house must learn from the play, improve its hand, and be ready for the next round with even better um, strategies to protect its assets. Just like in the casino, the stakes are high. The house must always be diligent to stay ahead of the game. So uh, today we're going to be talking about um, ransomware and breaches that are in the um, gaming industry. So you should expect to be immersed into the history of malicious actors within this um, space. And um, we'll talk about some of the threat actors, uh, some of their motivations, and some of the sector's unique um, application security challenges and responses, and how you can apply these lessons learned to other industries outside of the um, industry. Just a quick question. Any gamblers here? No? Everyone from Las Vegas? Okay, we got a couple. All right. So I'm not alone. That's wonderful. All right. Um, yeah. So um, we're going to just cover this real briefly um, just to make sure that you guys can see. Um, the history of, if you're looking at the history of a casino breaches, it started around 2014. Um, and since then, there's probably been about 10 different um, security breaches. Most recently, you've probably seen in the news uh, the breaches that happened with uh, Caesars um, and MGM last summer. Um, those are pretty impactful um, and pretty widespread. Um, and we're going to end with a, a case study of talking about those two so that you can see the difference, how the difference in responses basically led to two drastically different outcomes for those, those companies themselves. We're modifying, trying to make it for the most. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now that we've looked at the rising trend of uh, cyber attacks within the casino in industry, it's essential to dissect the types of threats that, um, that are deal they're dealing with, with the methodologies that cyber criminals employ. Uh, this understanding forms the basis of our strategy to combat the attacks effectively. So let's begin with uh, ransomware, the most notorious threat to operations. Ransomware encrypts critical data effectively holding operations hostage. The demand for ransom is accompanied by threats of data exposure, 
and also compounding a financial and reputational damage. Moreover, insider threats, whether malicious or unintentional, pose a significant risk. Risk. These are these can involve employees who either knowingly or due to negligence provide cyber criminals with access to sensitive systems and information. The sophistication of these attacks highlights the necessity of adopting a multi-layered security approach. This involves not only advanced technical defenses, but also thorough training and policies that minimize human error and mitigate insider threat. All right, so when we're looking at the um, casino industry, especially when we're just talking about some of the, the ransomware um, and challenges that they face, some of the, the things that you may have seen, like for example, last summer when they had the, a breach within MGM and um, at Caesars, was the biggest noticeable thing was when you visited their, their website, for example, or if you visited the, the mobile apps, um, a lot of the things that you as players and, and as both um, customers or people within the hotel were able to see was that, for example, you weren't able to log into your um, hotel room with your room keys, right? So all of those systems were down, so they had to actually result to um, actual physical keys as opposed to being able to log in, for example, with your um, Bluetooth or, or something of that nature. Um, the other thing that was basically brought down was the ability to be able to track, um, you know, for example, points, um, things of that nature. A lot of transactions that happen within uh, the casinos happen through, you know, like a point system where you're basically building up comps and you use those to purchase things within the, the casinos. So all of those systems were essentially brought down. So, you know, everything from, you know, having to do paper um, uh, receipt check-ins for them to be able to uh, uh, log people into the hotels, um, physical keys um, to be able to access the, the room keys um, and things of that nature. Um, and they weren't able to do any of the traditional transactions in terms of, you know, paying for food or any, anything of that nature. Um, in order to take credit cards, for example, they actually had to write down the credit card information on pieces of paper to be processed later, which probably takes us back probably about 20 years. So, you know, all of these systems, um, when they were um, going through their, I guess, disaster recovery plan, um, they did not consider what would happen if they basically lost access. Um, the other thing that I think that was interesting was, you know, not just the, the physical infrastructure within the casinos that was um, messed up, but then also um, the games themselves. So a lot of the slot machines, which are all in the same system, um, were basically turned off. Um, some of the table games were also turned off because they were on the same system. So in terms of contingency planning and things of that nature, you know, those failures, I think, became super evident um, and obvious um, during the course of this breach, these breaches. Um, the other thing that we'll say is that they have some very unique um, ICT um, and IoT related um, complexities. Oh. Um, and, you know, I think that for a lot of those complexities, we're going to be talking about how some of those challenges exacerbated the vulnerabilities that were exposed through the course of these um, ransomware attacks. So, and as we integrate more advanced technologies into operations, we must be considerate of the security risks that come with this expansion. So we're going to explore how the benefits of technology integration also expand the attack surface, introducing new vulnerabilities. All right, so um, as we're continuing our journey throughout the, the landscape facing the casino industry, um, it's important to address some of the technological advancements that um, have propelled the in, in, um, industry and made them very big targets for cybersecurity attacks outside of the fact that they have large amounts of data and then also a large amounts of money. Um, so one of those things is the use of ICT within the casinos. Um, I don't think you get to see the slides anymore. Um, <laughs> But um, casinos today, you know, are more than just uh, vectors for gaming. They also have entertainment complexes um, equipped, uh, equipped with advanced technologies from IoT-enabled um, machines. Ha! Success. Um, <laughs> so they've got um, IoT-enabled um, uh, systems that basically um, attach their slot, their slot machines, their surveillance system. Um, and all of those things as well. So all, all of these present multiple attack vectors for um, cyber criminals. So let's talk about some of those um, vulnerabilities. Um, when you consider the nature of these technologies, IoT devices by design are connected to the internet, but they often have very minimal um, or lax, um, sorry, very minimal or lax uh, security features. So this makes them susceptible to a large amount of attacks from simple unauthorized access to more sophisticated um, 
exploits like network hijacking. Um, additionally, ICT systems that manage everything from the slot payouts to customer data and centralized hubs that if breached can allow attackers to access critical systems. Um, so one of the things that I thought was interesting was that, you know, the MGM attack um, that was in 2019, um, which was, you know, if you're doing the math, maybe four years or so before the one that just happened last summer, um, it actually started when um, some attackers wanted to basically take control of some slot machines. So they went into the slot machines and whatever um, threat or vulnerabilities that they were trying to exploit, it didn't work out. So what happened was that they ended up just basically going and holding the entire system for ransomware, right? So it started off with they were just trying to take advantage of a couple of the, the slot machines, but that didn't work out. They decided to, to pivot. As we integrate more advanced technologies into operations, uh, we have to be considerate of the security risks that come with this expansion. So let's explore how the benefits of technology integration also expand the attack surface, introducing new vulnerabilities. With every new technology that's ad uh, adopted from IoT devices to cloud-based services, we inadvertently expand the attack surface. This means more opportunities for cyber criminals to exploit Many systems are initially set up with weak authentication methods, making them more uh, vulnerable to unauthorized access, whether it's simple passwords or outdated access controls. These weaknesses can open the door to cyber attackers. So all of these risks point toward a central challenge, securing the network. So network security is challenging in a highly interconnected environment where both wired and wireless communications are potential entry points for cyber threats. All right, so as promised, we're gonna take a look at the two different responses. Oh, I'm sorry, in one minute. <laughs> oh, oh yes, within, I'm sorry, one minute. <laughs> we're gonna take a look at the two different responses. The, the gist of the, the responses were that Caesars basically paid the ransomware um, and they were back up within four days um, and MGM did not. And I think that they were out for something like maybe 15 days or something like that. So the impact between them um, you know, uh, Caesars paid the ransomware, which I think was like four million, or was it four million? It was four million dollars. Um, MGM did not pay the ransomware, and they basically were out of, you know, a lot of the things were disrupted for over the course of the 14 days or 15 days or whatever that was, um, and it ended up costing them over 30 million plus, you know, untold um, impact to the organizations as as, this, as a whole. Um, but that was just basically the difference between two exact same uh, breaches. All right, um, so in the interest of time, because uh, we don't want to go over and, uh, and impact the, the rest of the folks, um, we'll just open it up to, to any, any questions. Any questions? Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.